Better go down and check on Brody. Reinhardt catch him off guard. It wasn't Reinhardt. It was that guy we saw going downstairs. I, I'm sorry. I never saw that fellow before. Well, it's done. You two boys go on home. I'll get a pickup out for Reinhardt. But remember, you're our only evidence of Reinhardt behind all this. So stay healthy. You, uh, heard what the man said. Yeah, I heard what he said. Stay out of this, Mike. I gave you every break. You wouldn't listen. You had to go and put your nose in where it didn't belong. Hey, put that gun away. Let's talk this over. It's too late for talk. Take the missus upstairs, Jerry. Mike and I are going out. Then you're crazy. So I'm crazy. Go on. And don't figure on using the phone. It won't get you nowhere. Mike's not leaving this house. Mary, please. He's not leaving this house. Mary. You heard me. Don't come no closer, lady. I'm warning you. I don't want to hurt you, Mrs. Malone. My beef is with Mike. Nobody else. I told you to stay out of this, Mike. I gave you every break. You wouldn't listen. You had to go and put your nose in where it didn't belong. All right. Mary. Call Sergeant Evans at headquarters.
Stop yakking about the farm, both of you. But you said it. You said we were going to the farm. That's why I sneak Lori out of the playground. All right, I said it. But you might as well know. There is no more farm. Everything went to the lawyers. They put me in prison. They took you kids away from me. My own brother's kids. They put you in a crummy orphanage. And I showed it. I broke out. They're never going to take me back. Never. Where are we going, Uncle Fred? Uh, no one will ever find us again. No one. be too soon for me. Getting nippy. Fish out the windbreakers, Jerry. Okay. Mike, you better pull over the side. I think we gotta go. trying to see the world through a windshield. Jerry, another one. Come on down, sweetheart. Don't be frightened now. Nobody's going to hurt you. Now, tell me your name, son. Can't Jimmy, I'm Laurie. Laurie? That's a very pretty name. Okay, Jimmy, tell me where you live and we'll take you home. Don't say anything. Oh, cooperative little type. Maybe he needs a bribe, like a gallon of ice cream. Now, son, don't be stubborn. Think about your folks at home. Going nutty, worrying about you, wondering where you are. Come on, where do you live? Let me handle this. I got away with women. Sweetheart. Tell me where you live. Honey, my name's Mike. You can call me Uncle Mike. I live in Toronto. Where do you live? Well, Uncle Mike, what's the next move? Do we build a bonfire, roast some marshmallows, or shall we sing them to sleep with a little rock and roll? Wise guy, 
The next move is to get a man out of the cold. Come on. No, no, no. I'm not going to hurt her, darling. I'm not going to hurt you. Get right up there. That's a sweet girl. Mike, what are we going to do? We're going to roll. There's no sense staying here. I don't mean that. I said, I mean, what are we going to do with the kids? I think better behind the wheel. Come on. You heard what he said, Skipper. Up you go. Talk about Silent Sam. This lad makes the Sphinx look like an auctioneer. If I ever pulled a deal like this when I was a kid, my father would have taken me into the woodshed. If he didn't have a woodshed, he would have built one. Did your old man ever belt you, Jerry? Oh, plenty. <laughs> Wasted motion. From where I sit, it didn't help a bit. All right, all right. Skip the child psychology. You've got a problem. And as usual, it's up to me to solve it. Okay, so solve it. First off, when we pull in, we unload this hot cargo to the police. You hear me right, Mike? The police. So? So that's it. Problem solved. Any objections? I guess not. They can probably take better care of them than we can. Why do kids like this run away? Parents worrying. Probably going crazy. Can they hurt or something? Well, if they're as quiet as this around the house, they probably don't even know they're missing. Number four division, Sergeant Quinlan speaking. Oh, hi, Mike. Oh, just a minute. Sounds like the same ones. There's been a bulletin out on them for the last 12 hours. Here's what we got. A fellow named of Fred Holton broke out of St. Vincent de Paul. Uh, they must have climbed down in Montreal, because we came straight through. Well, this Holton was their legal guardian. That is, until they threw the book at him. He's a two-time loser. Enticed the kids out of the orphanage playground. Figured nobody would stop a guy with a couple of children. You see, the girl was about to be adopted. That's right. Boy, too, but not by the same family. Look, I'll phone the orphanage, and in the meantime, Mike, you bring the kids over here. What? <laughs> well, if you want to take them home and feed them first, it's okay by me. Thanks, Joe. Supposed to turn him in, Mike. Yeah, take it easy. T take it easy. Mike, this car goes hot, real hot. I'll bet my bonus is alarm out already. How are you going to explain? It's already explained. I talked to Joe Quinlan. There is an alarm out. So? So we're going to take him home, wash him up, and feed him. So we'll turn him in late. Boy, you sure like to stick your neck out. <laughs> Freddy, sometimes you got to stick your neck out. Take an old turtle. He didn't stick his neck out, he'd never get anywhere. So now you're a turtle. All right. Now I'm a turtle. Let's get home. Don't help your milk, sweetheart. That's a good girl. Sure, Joe, they're fine. Eating like there's no tomorrow. Well, the orphanage people are going to pick them up. Uh, Joe, I figure like this. All you got at the station is a cooler. You haven't even got a matron there. Now, these kids are beat and they're scared. How about letting Mary put them to bed for a few hours? Sticking your neck out again. Pipe down. Uh, how's that, Joe? Well, I, I don't know, Mike. Regulations say that... So I'll take the responsibility. Good enough? 
The least we can do is clean them up and keep them warm. Ah, uh, thanks, Joe. You got nothing to worry about. You got my word. Yeah. Yeah, I'll tell her. Bye. Everything's okay. The orphanage people will be in from Montreal tomorrow morning. They'll pick up the kids then. Till then, we're responsible for them. Oh, good. Come along, then. Off to bed we go. And quietly, we mustn't wait, Jenny and Butch. How'd you do it? There's one guy that goes strictly by the book. It's Joe Quinlan. Right. He also happens to be a father. Let's get some coffee. No, no. My God, I'm gonna hit the sack. See you tomorrow. Night. All right, buddy. Jimmy is my kind of boy. Sure he is. Stubborn as a Kentucky mule. Now, oh, you wait a minute. Oh, never mind. I love you in spite of it. I don't know, Mary. Most kids don't know how lucky they are. Parents, good homes, plenty of time to toughen up before the lumps start coming to them. But those two, they've got two strikes against them before they even learn how to swing a bat. I know, dear. That Laurie. I wish she were ours. Yeah. She'll probably make those people who are adopting her awfully happy. Poor Jimmy. You said he was being adopted, too. Yeah, but not by the same people. He's not. No, they could be thousands of miles apart. Oh, no. People say it's a small world. But it could be a very big world to that boy. His heart is probably thinking that he'll never see his sister again. You remind me so much of Ginny and Butch when they were little. Sure do. The way he looks at her. She's as much a part of him as his, as his hands or his legs. Poor kids. I wish we could do something about it. Better come to bed now, Mike. No, I'm not sleepy, dear. You run on. Well, don't stay out too long. Now look in on the children. Good night, dear. Good night, sweetheart. for it. You just take it easy now. Listen, Joe, I, I swear to you, I'm telling the truth. Mary took him upstairs, put him to bed. When she came down... Yeah, Joe. But we'll find him. I know I'm in a jam. I promise you we'll find him. Willing to chew you out? Like I was hamburger. Come on, let's go. Mike, we better split up. Yeah, okay. You head for the bridge. If I don't have any luck, I'll meet you there.
I get my hands on you.
got to. Tell you, when I saw those two kids sitting on that track and the freight bearing down on them, I... Oh, hi, Jerry. Uh, Jerry, this is Miss Craig from the orphanage. How do you do? Mr. and Ms. Foster, the couple who are adopting Lori. Oh, nice to meet you both. Uh, this is my partner, Jerry Austin. And this is what happens when you lead with your chair. <laughs> <laughs> we understand from Sergeant Quinlan that the uncle got much the worst of it. And Jerry was much too gentle with him. Should have torn them limb from limb. Look, Mary will have the kids ready in a minute. She's got them all spruced up. That Lori's a little doll. Isn't she, though? We're so delighted to have her. Uh, nothing wrong with that Jimmy. He's a great kid. You know what he said? Last night after it was all over, he said... Oh, I'm sorry we've kept you waiting. Lori, dear? some coffee. Oh, I'm afraid we really must run, Mrs. Malone. We have a long trip, but I can't tell you how much we appreciate all you've done. And that includes leading with your chin, Mr. Austin. Wait a, just a minute, please, before you go. Uh, Jerry, he is, is uh, I'm a lot like a turtle. I keep sticking my neck out, and I, I guess maybe he's right. Well, anyway, it goes again. This boy, Jimmy, he is one in a million. He doesn't say much, but he's got a wall-to-wall -wall heart. Well, you two are good people. You're going to give Laurie a, a wonderful home. But what about Jimmy? He'll have a nice home, too, Mr. Malone. Yes, I know. But his sister won't be with him. He thinks more of her than anything else in the world. Is it fair that his luck's run out before he's even 10 years old? My dear, please. I'm sorry, Mary. Like I say, my neck's out. Mr. Foster, what about it? I mean, adopting Jimmy, too. If I know anything, he'll never be a burden to you. You'll be just as proud of him as I am. Sweetheart, would you? Sure. But, Miss Craig. Miss Craig? Would there be a chance? I'm sure there would, Mrs. Foster. We don't like to separate brother and sister, but sometimes these things just happen. You mean we can have Jimmy, too? Well, I don't see why not. Of course, there are the usual formalities, but I assure you, I'll recommend it. Come here, Sam. Mary, I want you to meet Turtle Malone, a real great guy. Hello, Turtle. Music to his ears. 
Cannonball! Cannonball! 